Welcome to The Right Stuff, CMC's series of talks with writers about their experience and life as a writer in the kids' industry. My name is Mariama Ayers-Moiba and I'm a scriptwriter. Today, I'll be talking to Denise Kassar, a head writer and team writer with a huge amount of experience in kids' TV. She's written on shows such as Bing, Thomas the Tank Engine, Mr Bean, The Clangers, Noddy, and has recently written on the excellent The Rubbish World of Dave Spud and the BAFTA-winning Lovely Little Farm. As a head writer, Denise has worked on Pip and Posey, Lou and the Bally Bunch, and she's also my head writer on the upcoming Isadora Moon, which is very exciting. She's absolutely brilliant, and I'm so delighted to talk to her about her work. Welcome, Denise. Thanks, Mariama. It's so good to see you, especially because uh, we met at last year's CMC for the first time when you were facilitating the Mentor You, Mentor Me session. And I am sure you got absolutely loads of people clamoring as I did to speak to you afterwards um and to to get you onto their onto their shows but I think like I'm really thrilled that here we are a year later working together on the same show and now man, having this chat uh for this year's CMC that's like I just love it when it comes full circle like that so it's great <laughs> to be talking to you <laughs> You too, likewise. (laughs) Can you talk a bit about how you started out writing for kids' telly? I actually didn't start out as a writer. I started out as a performer um, when I finished uni and I performed professionally for about 12 years, mostly in theatre. And then I, I kind of got into writing by accident, but it was something that because I was working with other people's scripts it was it felt like a natural progression to me to actually start writing scripts Um, and I started writing kind of by accident in the kids sphere and really enjoyed it and this was this was in South Africa Um, and the team from Sesame Street came over to Johannesburg to do uh, the South African franchise of Sesame Street and I got very lucky to be invited onto that team and that for me was this amazing steep learning curve of how to write for kids preschool um so it was a really amazing introduction to the industry and I kind of just love the kids sphere so much that I I didn't ever really consider wanting to move out of it so I've just carried on doing that (laughs) How do you find being a job in scriptwriter, getting to delve into the world of lots of different projects? To to talk a little bit about um, whether you're writing on your own projects or whether you're writing on somebody else's projects, because that, I mean, that's the beauty of it is that you are just, you go from one job to another and there's always something, um, there's always something amazing about every show that you do. I think when you, When you write on other people's projects, by the time you're invited onto the show, that absolute mountain of development has already been done. That hard work and that slog that's gone into developing the show, uh, selling the show. I mean, it's so lovely to be able to kind of swan in when it's green lit and go, oh, now I get to play with this amazing thing that you've created and make some stories um so that's one of the the real um advantages to to going on to somebody else's show um i think that uh, the the downside of that obviously is that it's not your show and it's not something that you've created so you are working in with within somebody else's parameters um and i think that um oh and i i think another thing about about working on somebody else's show is that if you um if you've got a block or you've got a knotty plot problem that you can't solve you could be on more than one show at a time so it's quite nice to be able to put that to one side and think about a different show you know if you're having problems making your rabbit and your mouse talk to each other go and see what your fireman says (laughs) you know what I mean so um that's another really a really great thing about working on lots of, of, of different projects. 
You've been a head writer on some fantastic shows. How did you make the move up to this? I think it's really important to tell people what it is that you want and to know what it is that you want yourself. So for instance, if you if you have an agent, if you're if you're lucky enough to have an agent, um, I think it's really helpful to check in with them regularly about what you're doing and where you want to be and what you want to do. Um, so I really just try and have a conversation with my agent every every few months that isn't necessarily about anything that's going on at the moment in work or, or contracts that are happening at the moment, but just about a broader conversation about the industry and about, you know, where where I see what I'm doing. And, you know, you. I think the thing is making that move up to being a script writer, a team writer to a head writer is someone's got to give you a chance, right? Somebody's got to give you your first go. Um, and that's sometimes that's, you know, that's luck, isn't it? Partly that's through um, the context that you've made. Um, if you if you have a reputation for being a, a really reliable writer, somebody who's creatively reliable and reliable in terms of getting the job done, then at some point somebody's going to go, oh, I wonder if they could take on a bit more responsibility. But it's kind of your it's on you to make sure people know that's what you want. So I think it's a mixture of both those things. There's a there's a little bit, there's an element of of luck, but there's there's kind of if you have forged yourself a reputation as a as a, a reliable good writer, then that's you know, that's part of the job. What do you look for as a head writer when getting new writers on board for a show? I think that we we look for somebody first of all that would suit the show. Because, uh, you know, some shows need writers who are really good at action packed comedy and real physical humor. Some shows need that kind of quirky left field feel. Some of them need a uh, gentle warmth. You know, some writers are better at. Um, I'm, I'm talking now about the kids industry in particular. Some writers are better at the at the really young end of preschool, those very gentle shows. Some are, um, are really good at the kind of more fast paced comedy that can go with a, um, a slightly older age range. So I think the when you look for writers um, for the team, it's important to get the writer who suits the show. That doesn't necessarily have any that doesn't mean they are not a good writer if they don't make the show. It just means they might not be right for that particular show. Um, and of course, like, you know, of course we read samples, um, writing samples and like the more choice you've got, the better. And that's the litmus test. But sometimes actually just talking to the writer is a really good way to see if they've got a feel for the kind of show that you're working on. Um, Obviously, word of mouth recommendations, um, somebody going, oh, you, you should work with this writer. I've really enjoyed working with them. They're great. Um, and then you're going to go, yeah, let me see. Let me see what they've written. Let's let's see. So I think that it's a, kind of a mixture of all of those things. How do you combine fun stories with important messages for kids in your work? Hmm. Well, that's the holy grail, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think the first thing you have to do the first thing, your first obligation is to entertain your audience, right? Engage them, make them laugh and keep them watching because if you can do that, they're going to be absorbing the messages that you're hoping to convey anyway. Um, so one of the most amazing processes we went through when I was co-head writing a show called Lou and the Belly Bunch for Brown Bag and Nine Story was we would take the second draft scripts and give them to um, their research department that we would put them in front of uh, kids focus groups. Um, they would storyboard them and put them in front of the kids. And that really quickly told us if our messaging wasn't working or not because if they lost attention if they weren't being entertained by the fun that was going on in the script they weren't getting the message either so both one thing feeds the other it's really important so I find when I'm when I'm writing scripts 
every single draft, I go back and ask myself, am I still working towards the message I initially wanted to get across? Like, is my fairy vampire learning to accept her dual heritage by the end of the episode? Or did the two best friends realize they weren't considering each other's feelings? And just keep asking yourself that question at every draft while at the same time writing those comedy scenes that are going to make the kids laugh and engage them and entertain them. So I think you can't divorce one from the other. You've got to do both at the same time. And if you're not doing one, the other one won't happen. Writing is always challenging. How do you deal with bad notes, rejection and setbacks? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I cry. <laughs> No, it's, um, you know, that's a really hard one, isn't it? Because sometimes, you know, you're sitting at home in front of your screen in your dog hair covered cardigan and you're not kind of, and, and it's very, it's very easy to to take criticism and notes personally. So I think you've really got to put things into perspective um, if you can. Um, you know, it's really hard to stop yourself diving into that kind of all or nothing thinking of, well, I got a note saying this doesn't work, therefore I'm a terrible writer. It's it, it's not that. It's about, it's about perspective and accepting that everybody on the team wants the finished product to be the best thing it can be. Um, so the other way around is when I, when I'm giving notes um, and um, you'll have had some of my notes before now, so you can say whether this is true or not. <laughs> I really try very hard to pinpoint the amazing things that the writer is doing um, at the same time as as, as um, giving notes about things that need to change in the script. If you do get notes that come in that you feel are somehow not right or there's something about them that doesn't work for you, just sleep on it if you can just because I always find that helps put things into perspective and and I guess the other thing is that um and this is this is useful for for head writers and writers to to know and do is that challenging a note is okay like it like if you really feel you the choice that you've made, the editorial choice that you've made was the right one, then then put that forward. Say, this is why I did this. What do you think? Can we consider keeping this? Um, and then it becomes a negotiation, not just somebody saying, here, take this note. Um, so I think, yeah, there are different ways that you can deal with with notes that you get. But I think the, the biggest thing I would say is keep it in, in perspective if you can. What are some of your proudest achievements in the kids industry? I was very proud to receive a Writers Guild Award in 2015 for um, an episode of Bing, which was essentially an episode about saying goodbye and putting memories into a bye-bye box, which I guess if I think about it was kind of saying they were going into a coffin. It was the death episode, if you like. That wasn't what the episode was about, but that was, it was amazing that, that to be recognized for, for that um, small preschool show for that award. But the, I think it, bigger than that, uh, like something I'm more proud of was working on Ra Ra, um, and that was a show about a noisy little lion who helps children to find their voice. Um, and there could be like a myriad of reasons why kids don't yet feel they have a voice or don't yet have a, a way of communicating in the way they want to, especially at, at such a young age. Um, and we got a letter in from a parent of a nonverbal autistic a little boy who had kind of made his first attempts to communicate in a verbal way while watching Ra Ra. And that was just an amazing, amazing kind of acknowledgement of exactly what we were trying to do in the show. So I think, yeah, that, that feels like one of the proudest moments, actually. Yeah, that's really lovely. What's next for you? Anything exciting you can talk about? Um. I can talk about my current show, which 
where are you almost writing on? <laughs> um, it's it's a show called Isadora Moon, and it's a show for a bridge audience. So we're talking kind of four to eight year olds, and it's uh, about a fairy vampire, a little girl who's a fairy vampire, and how she deals with accepting herself, accepting her dual heritage as a fairy and as a vampire. Um, it's based on a series of books uh, by Harriet Muncaster called um, Isadora Moon. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment. Um, and that should be broadcast at, at some point next year. It's it's a lovely show. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am, Mariana. <laughs> no, I love it. It's really good fun. <laughs> and lastly, what three bits of advice can you give to someone wanting to make the next step in their writing career? Right. Well, over and above, just be a great writer. <laughs> um, become known as somebody who always meets a deadline. Um, I know that sounds like a really, like that sounds like the least of, of the things that you have to do. You've got to, you know, follow a brief, write to a brief, come up with amazing ideas. Um, but it really, really like people who meet those deadlines time after time after time, um, and if you can't meet a deadline, then make sure that you make contact with your, your head writer to say, I have an issue with this deadline, I need some extra time. And there's usually some wiggle room, they'll find you wiggle room, especially if you're somebody who usually delivers to deadline. So that's, I would say, one piece of advice. Um, the, the other piece of advice, well, is what I just said now, if you, are, if you get notes that you don't agree with, don't be afraid to challenge it. Um, if you feel strongly about it, because that helps us all to do our jobs better. Um, and my third piece of advice would be if you are stuck with a nutty pro plot problem, have a shower. <laughs> That's what I, I do. I am the most well showered writer in the business. I don't know. There's something about there's something about a shower, just standing in the shower. I've solved a lot of like plot problems and come up with uh, uh, stories while standing in the shower. So I might take three a day if I'm having a, a tough day. <laughs> so yeah, have a shower, go for a walk and sit in a chair that's good for your back. Those, those, those are bits of advice I think you should take. <laughs> I can definitely vouch for the shower and the walk one. I love those too. <laughs> um, thank you, Denise. That has been honestly great to hear from you and all about your experience. And thank you, the viewers, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, there's a whole season of free video content coming online in the lead up to CMC in July. Don't miss out on a thing by following CMC on YouTube.